Hey, I get it. You like so so no freerin, or maybe you just clicked because you liked how hot mommy flam is on the thumbnail. Oh my god! Well, that's your problem, and you should get help for it. I'll just get straight to the topic of the video today. One of the standout aspects of this series is Freerin's magical prowess, which consistently leaves viewers spellbound. But here's where it gets interesting. The way magic is wielded varies significantly among humans, elves, and demons, sparking curiosity and discussion about the underlying magic system in the world of Freerin. At its core, magic in Freerin is about making the seemingly impossible possible. It's a fascinating blend of art and science, manifesting in myriad forms and sizes. However, it's not just a free-for-all. This magical world is grounded in a set of fundamental principles that govern its use, making the magic system both intriguing and complex. Whether it's the ethereal spells of the elves or the darker, more potent magic of demons, each has its unique characteristics and limitations. In this world, magic isn't just some run-of-the-mill wave a wand and see what happens affair. It's a complex and nuanced craft, where limitations are as unique as the mages themselves. So far, we haven't seen any hard caps on what magic can do, but it's clear that spells aren't just popping into existence out of thin air. They're crafted, refined, and honed through experimentation and creativity. Here's the kicker. To conjure a spell, a mage first needs to visualize it. This visualization is more than just a mental image, it's the bedrock of spell creation and development. Take the spell Zal track, for example. It didn't just appear, it started as a figment in its creator's mind, proving that the genesis, or the beginning of many spells is imagination, not logic. Now, understanding the science behind magic does help mages to wield their spells more effectively. However, this knowledge can also box in their magical prowess. Siri. A great elven mage, put it perfectly. One can only materialize what one can visualize. The ability to materialize spells hinges on a mage's willpower, creativity, and self-belief. It's not just about how much mana you have or how skilled you are with techniques. A mage's imagination and determination are critical gears in the magical machine, driving their abilities and shaping their magical journey. Another thing to note is that magic isn't just a one-size-fits-all deal. It's a diverse and intricate system that can be categorized into offense spells, defense spells, support spells, along with the more enigmatic goddess magic and curses. This diversity is what makes the magic in Freerin so riveting. Magic in Freerin is a universal tool, but its perception and application vary among demons, elves, and humans. Modern human magic, for instance, owes much to Flam's development and widespread dissemination. As a student of Siri, it's evident that modern human magic is heavily influenced by elven practices. Elven magic, while powerful, leans heavily on logic. This logical foundation grants it a wide range of applications, but can sometimes limit its versatility, as seen in the case of characters like Freerin. In contrast, ancient human magic was a different beast altogether. It was rooted in emotion, instinct, and pure faith, sans logic. This approach, while making some spells challenging to cast due to the lack of logical underpinning, unleash the power of imagination, transcending traditional boundaries. Then there's structured magic, often used by mages like Freerin, which follows a logical framework. On the flip side, unstructured magic, reminiscent of ancient human practices, doesn't adhere to a rigid structure. Demons in Freerin's world are a fascinating case. They often blend both structured and unstructured approaches, reflecting their highly individualistic nature. Demons tend to specialize in a specific type of magic, dedicating their lives to mastering it. This specialization can limit their versatility in other magical areas, but it also allows them to act on instinct, even when the logic behind their techniques is elusive or undefinable. In this enchanting world, three mages stand out with their profound impact on the magic system and storyline. Freerin, Flam, and Siri. This trio, through their unique abilities and relationships, offers a deep dive into the intricate magic system of the series. Freerin, the central figure, is a powerhouse in terms of technique, mana capacity, and experience, seemingly overshadowing the majority of mages seen throughout the story as well as her apprentice Fern. However, when it comes to becoming a first-class mage, the tables turn, 
Despite her superior abilities, Freeran fails to achieve the first-class mage status. The reason? Her inability to visualize herself as such. This pivotal moment in her journey was decided by Siri, her examiner, and a key figure in the magical world. Siri is not as petty as a lot of people might say. Freeran freely mentions in Chapter 57 that Siri's instincts have always been correct, and she seems to trust her judgment, as she also notes that the era of humans has arrived. Furin's realism, often her strength, becomes her weakness in a realm where imagination reigns supreme. Her approach to magic is methodical and strategic, weighing the pros and cons meticulously. While this mindset is advantageous in many scenarios, it limits her in the world of magic, where doing the impossible is the essence. Her hyper-realistic views constrict her ability to visualize beyond the bounds of logic, and in a world where visualization is crucial to materialization, this limitation hampers her magical potential. Another example is when they were trapped in Bo's The Immortals' barriers. Freeran can be seen already losing hope, but Himmel was the one who convinced Freeran to break through her constraints and push beyond her limits to make the impossible possible. Freeran's journey and challenges in the world of magic highlight an intriguing aspect of the series, the balance between logic and imagination, and how this balance shapes a mage's abilities and destiny. The magic system is shrouded in a veil of mystery, a creative choice that's quite common in fantasy storytelling. Much like a masterful artist, the creator of Freeran has intentionally left the magic system somewhat ambiguous. This approach isn't just a storytelling tactic, it's a strategic decision to fuel the fires of imagination and maintain flexibility within the narrative. This vagueness serves a purpose. By not cementing the magic system in rigid structures and logic, the series opens the door to a world where the imagination can run wild. In many fantasy worlds, a detailed and logical combat system often comes at the expense of rich psychological depth and vice versa. Freeran cleverly avoids this pitfall by keeping its magical foundations flexible, allowing for an organic and evolving narrative. However, the series does sprinkle in some intriguing tidbits about how magic works. For instance, it's established that mana originates from the caster and becomes less potent with distance. Yet, there's a fascinating twist. Magic barriers, like those created by Flam, remain functional even posthumously. This raises questions about mana imbuing objects or artifacts, a concept the series has yet to fully explore. Despite these unanswered questions, the magic system in Freeran resonates deeply with fans. Its blend of defined aspects and mysterious elements creates a captivating magical landscape. It's this balance of the known and the unknown, the explained and the unexplained, that makes the magic system in Freeran not just a plot device, but a character in its own right, full of potential and intrigue. Like and subscribe if you liked the video.